part business. Okay, today's daf is daf tzadik tes, and we will begin daf tzadik ches amud sheni uh, by the Mishnah. Okay, the Mishnah is right over here, called Chamesh Noshem Shnis Arvu Noshaseim. As I was saying, I, w- I was saying to Yaakov uh, over here. Uh, that it's funny how the Mishnah, the Mishnayis over here is playing mind games. It's the kind of questions that you have to deal with on, on IQ tests. And uh, these kind of mind games where you don't know who the father is and the kids get mixed up, well, I'll describe it to you. And this could only happen during war times, you know, something, some of the cases that the Mishnah discusses. It's just to exercise your mind here. So the, the Mishnah on Chamesh Nashim discusses over here, and I'm going to read it as I, as I describe what's happening. You have five women. Chana, Rachel, Esther, Rivka, Sarah. Step two. Uh, Chana has a son, David. Rachel has a son, Aaron. Esther has a son, Yitzchak. Rivka has a son, Yehuda. Sarah has a son, Gershom. And then they all had another child. Aleph, Beis, Gimel, Dalet, Hey. The reason why. But what happened was that these children, these children got mixed up over here. We don't know. Uh, if this is the if if David's the brother, for example, Aleph is David really the brother? But as as they all went to the hospital at the same time, and all their five kids got mixed up with each other, so you don't know if the if the women went home with the right baby. Put it that way. So you have all these kids now. And the next step is that when these kids grew older, they married women. Aleph married Seda, Bez married Miriam, Gimel married Zipporah, Dalit married Zilpa, He married Chava. They died without children. So now, technically, they're supposed to fall to Yibam. So the question is, the question is what to do in this case situation over here. So the mission is going to say, the mission is going to say is that if the, all these women are falling to Yibam at the same time, um, we would want that one to be Miyabim, uh, first, you give chalitza to all the women. First, all four would give chalitza to a woman, and one will be miyavin. And the next one, four will give chalitza, for example, to Miriam, four of, four, four of the brothers, David, Aaron, Yitzchak, Yehuda, Gershon, four of them will give chalitza, one can do yibam. Let's say Aaron will do yibam, David, Yitzchak, Yehuda, Gershon will do chalitza. Again, Sipora, uh, you'll have the other ones give chalitza, because and then, and then Yitzchak will do Yibam. Because you don't know if this Gimel was really the brother of Yitzchak. You don't know. It was mixed up. Maybe he was a brother of somebody else. And therefore, we require the Chalitza to be given first to allow Yibam. Because you can't marry this woman. You can't marry a woman that's supposed to have a Yibam or Chalitza from somebody else. So therefore, we require the other brothers to give, the other people to give uh, chalitza, and then this one person can marry her. Because Mamanashach, if Gimel, if Gimel was his brother, then by him doing Yibam to Tzipora, let's say, uh, that's his real wife, that's the real Yibam. And if Gimel was not his brother, so she already got chalitza from all the other, from her real Yibam, and therefore he's allowed to marry her. Okay, so let's read the Mishnah. Yeah, five women that their children got mixed up. Higdilu, and they have five normal brothers, okay? Five brothers that five people, five women, each have one son normal. The other second child of these five women got mixed up with each other. Higdilu hatarivis, the kids that got mixed up grew up, Vinasu Nashim and they died, and all married women, Vomesu and they died. So the Mishnah says, what for them will give every girl that's falling to Yibam will give Chalitza for them because maybe she's her, she's their brother. And one of the one of the people will be Miyabin her. Because no matter what, if this turns out to be the right Yavam for her, then they're doing a mitzvah. And if it was not, then she already got chalitza from the other parties involved here. So that's what you do over here. After you give, the, even the one that did yibam, he has to do chalitza to the other women. So him, the one that does yibam, and the other three, so there's always going to be four doing chalitza. 
Nimsu, when you do the calculation, Arba Chalitzis, V'yibam L'chol Achas V'achas. The woman is going to get four Chalitzis and will do Yibam to one of them. Okay? So back to the picture. You'll have each woman, let's say Tzela, will have four Chalitzis and then she'll do Yibam to David. Miriam will have four Chalitzis and will do Yibam to Aaron and so on and so forth. And therefore, that way it solves a big problem. So the Gemara is going to ask a question. The Gemara is going to just point out a very important point. First, you have to get the chalitza, and then you go to yibam. Aval yabumi beresha loy doing yibam first. That's not possible. The kaboga because maybe you're gonna, you're going to come across having doing uh, relations with a yavam that uh, that's to a strange person because perhaps one of these brothers. This was not his brother. And really, she, he was uh, Aaron's brother. So if he did Yibam first, he's actually doing Yib, uh, marrying a woman that really is falling to Yibam to somewhere else. So that's why you first request the Chalitza, and then you do the Yibam. My hu ushloisha cholson la'achas. The Gemara's question is, um, uh, the Gemara's question is, why do we have this situation that we'd have one do the Yibam and the others do it? Have one person do all the yibams. Let have one person marry all five women. And Mamanasha, after Chalitza, everybody gives Chalitza to the rest of the women. All four give Chalitza to all the women. And then one does all five. And therefore, he's doing yibam and he's permitted to marry them. And then by derivation, for sure, we're going to have one, one person. One of these five was his brother. So one of these women are supposed to fall to yibam. And then by derivation, let's say David be the one do Yibam on all five, and he for sure has a Yibam in there, in that scenario. And the Gemara says, no, but we'd rather have it this way, that they be Yibam by somebody else. Each one does Yibam to somebody else because there's a chance you'll, you'll probability, you might get two getting the Yibam, or, or the, you know, but with luck, you might have a three. So it's a bigger, you would rather do it that way. So that's what he says. The loy tamer. We don't say One should do the yibam for all the women, and then for sure he's he's makayim the mitzvah of yibam because one of those women are his his yavama. No, we rather have it this way. Each person should be miyabin one of them. Maybe he's going to get his right wife. He's going to get his right yavama. So you might have two or three of them that end up marrying the right person. Bernard, why did they, didn't we had this situation early on in Yavamas? It might have not have been with five, but it might have been with, let's say, three. And there was a question of whether it was the correct uh, Yavama, and you have to do a Chalitza first. And the same argument came up. Why would one did this all of them instead of each one doing it separately? It came up a long time, but I'm pretty sure it was very similar. I, I got to look into that. Uh, you, you're probably right. I don't think there's like much of a chiddush over here in this Mishnah right. except to play a mind game. You really could have the same situation with you have two people and, yeah. and two kids get mixed up and same same idea that they, they, they make it complicated. Yeah, it was. I think it was uh, they they brought up the lineage of the way it was it was presented here, but the the outcome the same thing at the like the third or fourth rung. But there was there was there was question whether or not. Who belonged to who, and who was the, real, the right Yavama? Who was, and therefore, the, the and was, I think it was Rav and Shmuel. Why said, why don't you do one, do all of them, as opposed to each one doing separately? I'm pretty sure I, I don't remember which dot, but I know the it just came up. I was wondering why they brought it up again. I, and maybe, maybe that's the chiddush that maybe uh, there was a machloikis back then, and it's telling you that we should go with the opinion that let's ha- for sure if one did yibam for all five of them. He for sure was behind the mitzvah yibam. That's you agree with that, right? right. Yeah. Day, and he got all one of them is his yavama. With, the coin cannot eat chimel, no. Yes, that's the coin cannot eat chimel. Nine, nine. But but by mixing it up, there's a chance that other people are going to land up with their yavama. So the more yeah. that direction. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The brisa continues mitzosan achen. You have, you have some of them are brothers and some of them are not brothers. 
The ones that are brothers the, the, so, uh, uh, do the chalitza. The ones that are not brothers do yibam. My kama, what are we talking about over here? Amar af safra hachi kama. Mitzosin achim and ab, mitzosin achim and aim, achim and aim, cholzim, achim and ab, biab. Just see the next picture. Very simple. Uh, complicated, but it's not. It's the same, I, the same idea. You have these five kids being mixed up. But let's say Ruve married Hannah, right? And they had Yosef, okay? Rachel and Ruvain had Yosef. But then Ruvain divorced Rachel. Okay. Well, he had two wives, so he, he actually divorced um, he, he actually divorced um, uh, that woman. And then, and then he, she went ahead and married an Boaz, another person. Okay? And Boaz had another son from, called Moshe from another wife. So, and then they had a child, Bez. Okay, Rachel and Boaz had this Bez child. Basically, the relationship between Boaz, uh, I'm sorry, the relationship between Bez and Yosef is that they share a common mother. They're not really brothers, right? You see Bez and Yosef? So Yosef has somebody that's really, uh, if this was his, if this was his real, if we know for sure that this was his brother from his mother's side, he would not be allowed to do Yibim to this woman. Why? Because they're only related by the mother, right? He would not be allowed. Let's just put that over here. He would not be allowed to do X. Why? Because, because that's it. They only share a common mother, but they don't share a common father. The common mother is Rachel, and, and his father is Boaz, and Yosef's father is Ruvain. So because Yosef is in this mix of people over here, and one of them, one of these women, he can't do Yibim to, therefore, he's going to always do Chalitza to all the women. He can't do Yibim to one. And what's going to happen with the rest of the brothers? The rest of the brothers will do Yibim to one woman after she receives Chalitza from the, from the others. And the, actually, one of them is going to do Yibim to, to Miriam, to, to, to two women. In other words, because Yosef is out of the picture, he can't do Yibim because he has a mix of Eishas Ach Min Ha'ein. Therefore, one of the other people are going to pick up the slack and marry two Yibamas in this case. Okay? Let's just read that inside. And the same will hold true with like this. So, there's a part of the mix has a brother in there that's only a related from the mother. So, the, the ones that are the brothers from the mother only can do chalitza. The ones that are, have, are, are brothers from the father do yibam because they can do yibam. Nothing is going to be wrong with that. Let's say mixosim kahanim, mixosim she'enim kahanim. Well, some of them are kahanim. Some of these people are kahanim, and some are not kahan. Well, kahanim. Once you do chalitza to a woman, she can He can't marry her. So kahanim cholzin. Kahanim will do all the chalitzas, and she'enim kahanim will miyabim. The ainim kahanim will do the yibim, and they'll pick up the slack wherever the coin could not. The, to how many kahanim there are? Let's say there's one coin. So one. So there's one extra woman. She's going to be married. The two. One of the people are going to marry two. Uh, two women. But if you have a mix of people of Kahanim and brothers from the mother, so therefore you can't do Yibim in this situation. Situation In this situation, everybody does Chalitza, nobody does Yibim over here. We go to the top of Daf Tzadik Tesem and Aleph. Here again, a mind game, but it's a nice mind game. Here we go. Tzadik Tesem and Aleph. Very simple. Uh, let's go Tzadik Tes. Okay, easy. This is where we're going to take one of the pictures over here. Well, the, the Bryce is going to say, how is it possible? How about this? How is it possible that your mother could fall to chalitza to you? you? You think it's not possible, but it's possible. The Bryce is going to say, somebody could be do chalitza to his mother, Miss Suffolk. How is the case? Let's read, let's read it. Yaakov and Rachel are married. They have a son, Yosef. And then Ruvain is married to Chana, and then he has a son, Chetzrai, right? Now, now also, Ruvain had a son, uh, 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 Ruvain, uh, Rachel, I'm sorry, Rachel had a son, this son over here. And Ruvain had another son, Bez, we'll call them Bez, okay? And these Aleph and Bez right here, 
let me get my drift. These guys got mixed up, mixed up. They're mixed up with each other. We don't know if they're real brothers. Okay. So now, and now let's see, let's see what happens over here. And Yaakov died. Yaakov died. Okay. And Ruvain died. And Yosef and Yosef and uh, uh, Yosef married Hannah and Chetzroin married Rachel. They're not related to each other, so that could happen, okay? So each one married the other woman. But remember, Rachel has a son and Hannah has a son. We just don't know if they're brothers. Guess what? Chetzroin and Yosef died, and they fall to Yibam. To who are they falling to, to, to Yibam? So if they fall, they're, they're falling to Yibam uh, to the other brothers. So therefore, Yosef and Chetzroin die. So now... Uh, Yosef and Chetzron die, so these girls are falling to Yibam. So can uh, if if Yo Rachel's falling to Yibam, we don't know. Maybe Rachel is not his mother. Maybe Yechana was his mother. So therefore, he's going to do chalitza to both Rachel and Chana, and Bez is going to do chalitza to Rachel and Chana. So he's doing chalitza on his mother because he doesn't know. He has two women falling to Yibam. One of them is his mother. So that's the that's what the Bryce is going to say. There's a possibility to do chalitza from your mother to your mother. Your mother could fall to you from Masafik. Sometimes your sister, you don't know, you're going to do chalitza because maybe this woman is your sister. And maybe you're going to, you're going to do chalitza to a person that's your daughter, but you're doing Masafik because you don't know if it's your daughter. Kate said. A woman and this strange uh, another person, another uh, his mother and another woman have two sons. the older and then they had another two sons that were born in hiding. So one normal son, and one that was mixed up. Each one married the other person's mother. They died without children. So now these two women are falling to Yibam. So. You don't know if it's your mother falling to Yibam or Chalitza, or, or is it or is it a strange woman? Each one gives a Chalitza to his to, to the other one because because um, because it's a, you don't know if it's his mother or not, so you can't do Yibam. Now the next uh, the next time question is how is it possible to give Chalitza to your sister? So you have two sons. Um, Yaakov has two sons, Reuben and Shimon. Yaakov took another woman named Rachel and had a son, and and has had a son, Levi. And now Yaakov died, or he got divorced. Rachel, okay, R Rachel got married to Moshe. Mark Rachel married Moshe, and they had, and Moshe had another woman, another woman. So Rachel, Moshe had two wives, Rachel and this other woman. And they each had a child, Aleph and Bez. Okay, they each had a woman. I'm sorry, a, a lady, Aleph and Bez. Reuven and Shimon married Aleph and Bez because they're not related to Moshe, not from the mother and not from the father. They're not they're, Reuven and Shimon is not uh, mother is not Rachel. They somebody else. So they were married Aleph and Bez. Now they die. Levi, one of them is his sister. Maybe it's Aleph is his sister, or maybe Bez is his sister. So therefore, he has to give chalitza to both Aleph and Bez because the chashash is that one of them is his sister. That's what the mish. That's what we're saying. La choisim misafa keitzad im aviisha acher shiol deshtein a keva is pamachave. Two they two women gave birth to two uh, girls in hiding, and the and the kids got mixed up. Ovo achein shloim moiseim in a psalm, and the other brothers from another mother married them. Umesu b'loy banim, and they died without children. So choilitz deshteim. He has to do chalitza to both of them because maybe one of them is his sister. So we have a case of somebody giving chalitza to his sister, Misafik. Another case. How is it possible to give chalitza to your daughter, Misafik? Okay, let's go over here. A, a person can get, if very, this is an easier case. Ruvain, uh, we're just giving a case that how is it possible your own daughter falls to Yibim and you don't even know if it's your daughter. How is that possible? You have three brothers. Uh, Ruvain has uh, two brothers, Yaakov and Yitzchak. Ruvain married Leah, and they had a son. They had a, a daughter, Aleph. Okay, so and 
and he had a daughter, Alf. Let's just ignore this for a second. It could go by this way. So let's say Yaakov married Aleph, Yitzchak married Beis. Okay? Yitzchak married this one. So now, if Yaakov marries one of the girls, he's marrying basically his niece or, or he's marrying a strange woman. And other ones marrying the niece or a strange woman. They both die. Now, Ruvain is faced with a dilemma. Which one of these people who are falling to Yibam, if Yaakov Yitzchak's wives, which one of them is his daughter? Since he does not know which one is his daughter, that's why, that's why he gives chalitza to both of them, because perhaps one of them is his daughter. So therefore, two women falling to Yibam from two different places, from Yaakov and Yitzchak, one of them might be his daughter. That's why he gives chalitza to both. And the same thing could happen in another scenario, uh, in the opposite case. You have to look at uh, Rashi. But basically, that's the idea. Uh, so they died without children. So now you have two women falling to Yibam. He's giving a chalitza to his own daughter. He doesn't even know if it's his own daughter. And the other, the other, if it happened to another family, they're going to do chalitza to their daughter, Misafik. New Gemara. Tanya, we learned to the Raisa. And Rab Meir is coming to another mind game. But here's, I love this game. This game you're going to like. Rameir said it's possible to have a family that's going to have five boys, and each one is going to be a different thing. They'll have one boy that's a goy, one boy that's a ger, one boy that's a slave, one boy that's a mamzer, and one boy that's a Yisrael. How's that possible? You know, you have like these uh, wild families. One's a Breslova, one's a Sakmer, one's a Mizrahi. And, 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 you know, you have all different stripes and types. Now, this one is a family that can have all four, five different children. How? Let's say an Ebe, a guy buys an Ebed and Shifcha, and they already had children already. One of them is a Goy, because he was born before the Jew bought him. So a Jew bought an Ebed and Shifcha, and they had a child from before. So that remains a Goy. But let's say one of the children wants to become a Jew. So that, that kid becomes a Ger. So you have a Ger kid. And let's say... He, they go to the mikvah, and uh, the Evan and Shifcha become the Jewish slaves. Well, a Jewish slave with a, a maid can produce another slave. So then the third child will be an Evan. Let's say he frees, let's say he frees the Shifcha, right? And makes her a Bas Yisrael. So then the Evan, who's married to the Shifcha, is now really having relations with a Jewish woman because he freed the Shifcha. A go, uh, Eved, the uh, Rameir holds an Eved that has relations with a Bas Yisrael can produce a Mamzer. And then if the, if the master frees the Eved, so now the Eved is free, a Jew. And the Shifcha was already freed from before, so she's Jewish. So now the, their off, the fifth offspring will be Israel. That's what Rameir just said. Tanya, we learned in the Brisa. Hoy Rameir, Oymer, Rameir just said, Ish for Isha, you can have a couple. They can have five kids from five different nations. Kesad, how is that possible? Yisrael shalokach eved v'shivcha menashok. A Jew bought a slave and a maid from the street, and they had children from before. Lehem shnei banim. They had two boys. Those two boys and the eved v'shivcha are all goyim. V'niskaya echemem. One of the boys became a ger. Nimsa. therefore, they have one son, echel ger. One son is a convert. Ve'echel goy, and one is a goy. Hit Bilam the Shem Avdas, then he put the Evan and Shifcha into the mikvah. Now he makes them really Jewish slaves. Veniskas and Zelzan, they had relations. And then they have another child. That child is an Evid. Harekan Ger, Goy, and Evid. That's a Ger, Goy, and Evid. Shikra is Shifcha. Then he freed the, the maid, the mother, of all Evid, and the Evid has relations with her. Well, then it's a mamzer because Hare Kangani Vagoy the Evid a Mamzer. Why is it a Mamzer? Because the, the husband is an Evid who comes in a Bas Israel. The offspring is a Mamzer. Even though it's not a Kharis thing, but Rameir is of have a, has a strict interpretation of how to make a Mamzer. Sheikh Rishneem, he made them both three, the Yesi and Zelazah, Hare Kanger, Vagoy the Evid a Mamzer Israel. If he freed them both, so now the Evan and Shifcha are both regular Jews, and then they have another child, they'll have the child will be a regular Israel. So you have one family that has a Ger, a Goy, an Evid, Umamza of Israel. So the Gemara asks, my Kamash what kind of what, what's the novel, what's the novel opinion over here? Uh, or what, it seems like a mind game. Sure, you can make up all these kinds of stories. 
answers the Gemara. No, it's teaching you a din. Goy ve'eved haboa abbas Yisrael. Goy ve'eved that that marry a Jewish woman. Havolad mamza. The child is a mamza. New Gemara. Another similar. Tanur a beautiful case. Yesh moicher as aviv lahagbois imay ksu basa. It's possible for a man to sell his mother to pay the ksuba. I'm sorry, he's going to sell his father to pay a ksuba for his mother. What do you mean? You're going to sell your father to pay your mother to pay your mother her ksuba. Ketzad. How is that possible? Well, listen to this case. So he bought a goyish evid and slave from the street, and they had a son. That son is a goy. And he freed the, the, the maid and married her. So now the Jew married the maid that he bought. And then he got up and he wrote, the cost of kol the cost of livna. All my properties, my possessions belong to this son, this guy over here, right? So now his father is an Evid, but his mother, the Shifcha, actually married the, the master, the Israel. And then the Israel died, and now he, he is in charge of all the property of his father, the, of his, you know, of his, his, his mother's new husband, the Israel. And he has to make sure his mother gets Ksuba. So he's going to sell his father the Evid to pay for the mother's kesuba. Nimtza zamoicher as aviv. He's selling his father the, his Evid. A hag so she'll have money to pay out his mother for her kesuba. A nice little case of a person selling his father to paying his mother. So Gemara asks, "My kamash Malam, what is this novelty of this uh, point of this case?" So the answer is Kula Rab Meirhi that all this is an extension of Rab Meir giving you another riddle. And he's trying to teach you that the lien of a woman's ksuba can also be a movable ayyavrins. And therefore, there's a lien, so to speak, on the evet. Avda metaltali. Avda, the slave is movable ayyavrins. Metaltali mishtabili ksuba. And the metaltali have a lien on it to pay the ksuba. Oh, so therefore, he, he's responsible to pay the, the ksuba from the evet. That's why he's selling his father. The eba is saying, if you want, I can tell you, hakamash mulan. Uh, that the uh, really a slave is like real estate, and therefore there's a lien on the slave for the ksuba because a, sl- a slave has a din like real estate, and this is another discussion uh, for somewhere else. So, they, but the, it all leads to a, a, a son selling his father the eved to pay for a ksuba for his mother. New Mishnah, and there's only two more pictures left. Basically, the Mishnah says that. Uh, a Isha that got uh, Yitzchak and Chana. Yitzchak, or Chana, a husband and wife. And the next case is that they have two sons, God and Asher. Okay? Asher, okay, and then the, the Asher had Rachel. Asher took Rachel, and they had a son, Menashe. Okay? Now, Asher had another son that's called Bez. Okay? And now Yitzchak had Yitzchak right over here had relations with his wife had another son Aleph, okay. Now, but they got mixed up with each other, and they all married. So what's the din? So when they uh, the, 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 the din is that the, this one could do the 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 son of the son-in-law, they'll do chalitza and not yibum, because it could be his brother's wife. That he's doing, uh, that they're going to do Yibim. If Menashe does Yibim over here, it could be he's, Esther is really his aunt and he's not allowed to do Yibim. So Menashe will always do Chalitza. And God, who's also responsible for doing Yibim, he can do Yibim or Chalitza to any one of these women. That's what the Mishnah says. Ishish, this Ishish and this Arav Lada of Lad Kalasa. A woman got her daughter, her, her child mixed up with the child of her daughter in law. If the kids that got mixed up grew up, they married women, then they died. The sons of the daughter in law, because you have a deal of a Suffolk, Aishas Achiv, maybe it's his brother's wife, but Suffolk, Aishas Achi Aviv, maybe he's marrying his aunt, the, the wife of his father's brother. So therefore, he can't do Yibab, he can only do Chalitza to those women. 
but the Bnei Hazakena means that the, the old, the, 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 the real brother, Oichaltsin, Oimiyab, and he can do Chalitza or Yidim, Shesafik Eishes Achiv, the Eishes Ben Achiv. He's dealing with a woman that might be his brother's wife or might be the wife of the son of his brother, the wife be his wife of his nephew. Either way, it's kosher for him, so he could do Yibim. Last case. This is the last case, and the rest of the Mishnah we could fly. Okay, the Mishnah says that if Mesu HaKasherim, what are we talking about? If God married a woman, and Menasha married a woman, right? Similar story over here. You're right. So God, instead of the Aleph and Bays marrying somebody, like it was in the previous case, the God and Menasha, the previous grand, the, the, the son and the, the grandson, actually, they the ones that died. So their mission is going to say that, that so they're falling to Yibam to the, the, these kids over here. So then we do only Chalitza uh, to, to, the, to, the, to the Bnei Hezekina, so we say we could each one has a shash. Maybe it's the son of his uh, of his wife, or maybe it's something else. So they can do only do chalitz in that case. Let's see. Mesu akasherim a teravis levnei hazakena cholsum lebiyamim. The ones to the the teravis doing to the son of the zakena, they could only do chalitz to his wife, not to yibim. Shvai shu suffik eishasachiv. It might be their brother, but it was eishasachiyav. It could be their uncle's wife. If Neha Kala, so then to the one to the one that married the Kala, the one that married the the, the grandson, one could do chalitza and one could do yibam. Okay, Mishnah continues. Here you don't need diagrams anymore. Kohenes and his Arab vladob vlad shifchasa. Kohenes that got her daughter son mixed up with the shifcha. So you have a shifcha of a koyen. They had a son. So, and the Kehenis, the mother, the, the Koyin's wife, also had a son, and those children got mixed up. So one is a real Koyin, one is an Evid of a Koyin. They could all eat Truma. And they get one portion of the Goyim, because in the, when they collect Truma, one is a Koyin, and one is an Evid of a Koyin. So therefore, therefore, if they come to collect Truma, they get only one portion. We go to Ahmed Bey's. The Einam et these two children cannot be metamala mason. Why? Because we don't know which is a kayin. He could be a kayin. He could be an evid of a kayin. So therefore, we're machmir and say that nobody could go tamala mason. We treat them both as kayin, kayhanim. Here is a bigger problem. When they grow older, this kayin that got mixed up with his maid's uh, son, so yeah, you don't, he doesn't know if he's a kayin or an evid, he can't marry anybody. He can't marry Yisraelis because maybe he's an Evid. He can't marry a Shivcha because maybe he's a Kayin. So he can't, both of them have this problem, and therefore they can't marry anybody, a, a, a regular Jew or a Shivcha. Let's say they grew older, and then they gave each one a Shivcha. If you're the Evid, I'm letting you go free. If you're the Evid, I'm letting you go free. So then, so once they once it goes free, then they can marry a Jewish woman. They can marry women that are worthy of kahuna. But they both can't be Tamil Mason because maybe he's a Kayin, maybe he's a Yisrael, because that's the problem. So he doesn't know. If he did go and touch a dead body, so he doesn't get Malchus. Why? Because we don't know if he's a Kayin or a Yisrael. He can't eat truma, again, because he's a Suffolk Kayin, a Suffolk Yisrael. If they do eat truma, they don't have to pay it back with the, with the 20% uh, deal over here, because maybe he's a Kayin, and a Kayin was allowed to eat truma, so you can't force him to pay back uh, uh, Karen and the Chaymish, the, the 20% fine for eating truma that you're not supposed to eat, because maybe he's a Kayin, and maybe he was allowed to eat truma. And when they both when they come to collect truma, we don't give it to them because the guy who's responsible for distributing truma will say to them, "Prove to me that you're a kayin. You might be a Israel. So therefore, I'm not giving you truma." Their own truma, if they have truma from from their own pocket, they don't have to give it to a kayin, but they can't eat it themselves because maybe they're not a kayin. So we allow them to sell it and keep the keep the money. Sell it to a kain and, and keep the money. 
And they can't get uh, sacrificial meat because, again, he's a, he's a Kayin or Yisrael. We don't know each what, what they are. So they can't participate in the service. You don't allow them to do the service in the base of Migdash, obviously, because he's not a Kayin. If they are obligated to bring a Chathis and Ashram or an Oila, we, can, we allow them to decide to who to, you know, usually if someone had to bring a chatas oila, he had to give it to the koyin that was his job, his week was serving in the base of Migdash at that time. It's his responsibility. But since this guy might be a koyin, he has leniency not to give it to that koyin. He could decide whichever koyin he wants to be makravit. And he could always keep what the gifts that he's, that he's supposed to give to the koyin, because perhaps he himself is a koyin. So you can't force him to lose money. Uh, uh, so therefore, like those gifts to the kain, he can keep. Upaturim and Ezroim l'chaim and akeva, and he doesn't have to give those gifts to the kain called Zroya l'chaim and akeva. That's also part of the kain. Uvchayre, if he had a bechar, so he might be a kain. So then, then he's allowed to keep the bechar. If he's not a kain, so what do we do? Yehiroya atchi yistoyev. You make sure that it gets a mum. And then he doesn't have to give it to a coin. He can he can benefit from the bachar because it's his. Because again, he's we don't know if he's a coin, so we don't force him to pay the money as if he's not a coin. Because you have to prove that he's not a coin in order to force him to pay money. One more point: On these people, we give them the stringencies of a coin and the stringencies of being a Jew. We'll explain that what that means in the Gemara. One more line in the and then we'll stop. We said that the Kesherim died. So we said, In the case of the Mishnah, we call these people God, uh, God and Asha Kesherim. And these are Psulim. Why are these possible? They're not possible. They just got mixed up. So why are these people called Kasher kids? So the Gemara says the language of the Mishnah is a little funny. But Amar Papa Ema Umesa Havadoim. What the Mishnah means that the for sure, kids died. The mixed kids are the ones that are alive. That's what the Mishnah means to say. The mixed kids are the ones that are alive. Or the the uh, uh, that's that's the second case. The bnei akala echachoyitz dafka. We say miklatz chaletz the yabume. We only do chalitza and ben yibam. The yabume beresha loy the kabhagabe yomel shuk. We don't allow them to do a yibim first because maybe he's, he's not doing yibim to the right woman. Maybe the woman belongs to the other man. Therefore, we require chalitza and then yibim. Okay, so that's that's the subject over here. We'll stop over here on Tzadik Tassim and Beis. We'll get um, with this tomorrow. tomorrow. Yes, <laughs> Yeah, it's so hard to do it, but you got if you just... That's a very, that, I, I find that one of the more complicated topics. <laughs> For me to follow, but it was uh, very interesting. These uh, the the uh, situations that they challenged themselves with Hazal, amazing. So it's funny. The-